Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto and today we're going to interview Dr. David Zuckerman here. He is uh, kind of a, a entrepreneur and he never knew that maybe, but he is and he has a lot of great technologies has been brought to the podiatry profession. Welcome, David. Thank you very much, Don. I appreciate you inviting me and um, you know, I didn't know who you were. If it wasn't for Laurie Duchesne, I would have never met you. <laughs> So let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, podiatrist as entrepreneur. Uh, tell me your experience as an entrepreneur. You were in practice for 30 years, and during that whole time, you were an entrepreneur. How did you get interested in bringing things to the profession? Um, as I told you before, it started with e ESWT. And it started because I had a complication with plantar fasciotomies. Mm -hmm. And I, I was always looking there has to be something better. And that's how the ESWT started with me. And I, I wanted podiatry, as, as I told you earlier, I was doing over 100 cases a year from all over the country, all over the country. And I knew I had a, a, a great business. I eventually turned it into a mobile unit where we, I could have kept it in my office, but I wanted it to be mobile or mm -hmm. ambulatory where the doctor would have the opportunity. I mean, today we, I've trained over 600 orthopedic and podiatrists. Maybe I don't even keep count. Yeah. I'll tell you what I knew I had a business and is that on 9-11, I'm coming into my office working and we had a mobile company and uh, I won't take too much, but just, it just popped into my head and a woman is on the phone screaming at me and the New Jersey Turnpike is shut down. We don't know if we're under attack and she's screaming at me and she says to me, uh, how come you're not here? And I said, what are you talking And at, and we still do it today. We charge twenty five hundred dollars. This was not insurance, which we can talk about. This was twenty five hundred dollars for one foot and thirty five for two. And I said, New Jersey Turnpike is shut down. And that's when I put. And the, my staff was a little nervous. And I said, We have a business on the worst day of the history of the United States. People are begging for my service. Yeah, because you provided value—a value that no one else can provide. And, and that's so important. If you got to find a product. I need to find products that are valuable. First, it's the patient. I don't look at the doctor. I look what the patient wants and needs, and then the doctor's next. Yeah. So, and that sounds like it gives you a lot of a pride of being able to provide something of value to your patients, but also the profession. Absolutely. It gives me, um, it gives me great pride. Um, am I looking for awards and accolades? Here's what I've learned. If you keep wanting that, you're never going to get it. Just be yourself, do what's right, do what's ethical, do what's best. If I made mistakes, <laughs> yeah, I can laugh at myself too. Yeah, yeah you're going you're gonna to lose. I was talking to a, chiro a chiropractor today that wants to get involved in laser business. He's a genius when it comes, he's a genius of clinician. And I'm saying, we've been talking about this for three months, get started. I have no financial involvement when I introduced him to somebody else because I don't, um, that's what I just did. And he hasn't gotten started. All I can say is get started. Are you going to make mistakes? You better believe it. You, you, know, you know, David, that goes right into one of the questions I had. And it might even just be the answer. Why aren't more podiatrists more successful? And, and you can call success whatever you want. But, you know, is it, is it, is it that lack of action that they're not taking on new, new technologies and new ideas? I think whatever you do, you got to take action now. Now, and, and I'll tell you one thing I've learned. I mean, I'm 66 years old. I did practice podiatry for close to 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I only let, thank, you know, you got to look at negative things and how they turn positive. I'm blind in my right eye. I lost vision in my right eye. And that put me out of podiatry. That was the end. I could have sat there and cried, but I'd still be sitting in that room eight hours a day and wondering how to figure things out because I loved my patients. I loved what I was doing but it pushed me into another direction that uh, I'm thankful for to this day. And, um, you know, success, you got to listen. How do you know if you're doing something right or wrong? And I'll tell you something I've been doing in the last year is it's a gut feeling. Listen to that little man inside of you. You know when it's not the right thing to do. You really do know it, but trust yourself. Are you going to make mistakes? Sure. But sometimes mistakes lead you into a direction that is really what you were looking for. Yeah, yeah. Life is a short play. My father used to say to me, my father was 97 years old when he passed away. He was a podiatrist and uh, he lived an amazing, I'll tell you, he, he, knew, he was a lot smarter than I realized, a lot smarter than I realized. I mean, 
you know, we could talk about, you got to put your priorities in, 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 in the proper thing and what's important to you. I can tell you what it is right now, my health. Yeah. Most important thing, my health and time with my family, my friends and people. Everything else, it'll come. Mm-hmm. It'll come. I think that having that balance is, is really in, important in the profession. And I think a lot of times we learn in, in school and then in residency. And then one of the challenges is, is maybe, do you think people continue to try to improve themselves after residency or do they just stay stuck with what they've learned there? Oh, uh, well, that could be one of the problems that people have. You know, um, I mean, when I, when I was first in practice, I did my residency. If I found a, uh, something that somebody could teach me, I would travel to their office. You can't do that today. You can't do that today, but we now have Zoom. We have the, the, the social media. You can connect so much easier and so much better. I'll never forget one example. I had a doctor. Um, I looked at him and we're talking and he made cellos podiatry. He made cellos and he made humidors by hand. So I said, darn, I got to go visit him. And uh, because can you imagine what his hands are or like, or something he could teach me. He was the worst podiatrist I ever saw in my life, but I went there and, but I learned some, I mean, you learn things. You, sometimes you got to learn what you don't want as opposed to what you do, not. but get a close up look at it. Take a look at it and see if it's what's best for you. Awesome. Awesome. Let's talk about uh, some of the new technologies that you popularized in the profession. I think you talked about ESWT, some laser work, and the latest thing is the Onifix. Those are the three, and the, the Remy laser and, and the Onifix. Right. And I have another one, the Matrix Burr. Let's, let's tell people. Uh, I'll tell you about the Matrix Burr. I, law, I, I brought what was called the Clear Nail. It's a micro drill that puts little holes in the nail so that the topicals can penetrate deeper and like a holding tank. I fell in love with the technology called micro drilling. However, I lost so much money on this, but don't quit. There's reasons. The clear nail. I mean, my, I didn't listen to my gut feeling. My friends talked me into this. I wasn't able to control the service. It was a disaster. Then I went to the path former. And the reason I'm telling this is I, led, I kept looking because I, I felt the technology was important and it was evidence-based. Mm-hmm. I got very close with Dr. Gupta, one of the foremost um, um, doctors in, the, in, in publishing onychomycosis. So you get to meet different people and you can learn from different people. But this is a great story. 9-11, uh, I'm talking to a, um, a friend of mine, Bruce uh, Levinson, and we're working on N95 masks uh, on a 3D printer. I'm helping him out. And he says to me, you got to help me. I got to just get the message out. So I use my 11,000 email. We just put it out. So I'm saying, I'm talking about the burr. Bruce is an expert in, in, in podiatry and burrs and instrumentation. So I said, Bruce, they're all, for, see all these expensive $15,000 drills uh, where they had, they had special technology where it would stop before it hit the nail bed. But I learned one thing. They all go one millimeter. So it doesn't matter. But podiatry would get, they get nervous. So Bruce made a sleeve. I got to show you this. Where This is, well, hold on. It, okay. He made a special sleeve for it. And where, can only go one millimeter? So we did it on a 3D printer. But if we weren't working on N95 masks, I, I don't know what a 3D printer is. I do now. And they, I mean, this is six, this will be good for podiatry because it's six bucks a burr. They can throw it away. They can put in any drill they want. And... Yeah, am I gonna make money on it? No, I don't wanna. I gave it to Bruce, he's the manufacturer because it improves podiatry and it yeah. will come back to you. Mm-hmm. And now we're combining it with the Remy laser so it's improving fungus toenail outcomes even more. You gotta you just keep moving forward and learn and keep, the key is, you know, there was a, there was a saying that I, I hope I can quote it right by Winston. I don't like to give sayings and, and quote books and I don't like that at all, uh, but a lot of people do. But Winston Churchill said, how do you define success? Having enthusiasm still between failure. Mm-hmm. That's what it sounds like. You, you've had some failures and, and you learn from it. Yeah, you learn from it. I mean, I could, you learn from it and you know, um, you learn. You just, that's what life is. It's a journey. It's a journey of learning. Um, you know, I mean, I just hope I don't get bored with what I'm doing. I've been, I've been home for since the COVID. I haven't gone anywhere. I go, I walk, I'm exercising and everything, but I mean, I always wanted a dream. Like my business right now can be done anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. 
on a cell phone and a laptop. And I've done it. I was living in York for four months and I did it. Uh, there is one thing that's very strange that, uh, and I thank God and I'm grateful is the COVID, I've been more busy th through the COVID than in mean, my 15 years. Wow. And I don't know why I'm not complaining about it. Um, I'm grateful for it. you got to be grateful mm -hmm. for things. Don't chat. Why you just be grateful. And I find I'm more successful when I try to help the other person than myself. And that's something that's very, very important. If I, I, any advice I can give, and I've tested it. When you think about yourself, you're going to fail. When mm -hmm. you think about the other person, you're going to be successful. And just, I mean, if you can just learn that one thing, you know, you'll feel a lot better. You've, it's all about feeling good. It's not about money. It's not, I mean, you do need money. Don't trust me. You need money in this world. And it's important uh, to have money. Maybe. I'm not so sure about that anymore. Uh, people say to me, uh, hey, look at that guy. You know, like you look at a, a president or somebody or a very well-known person. How do you know he didn't have this little itch behind his neck that was driving him crazy? How do you know? Don't compare yourself to the other person. My mother-in-law used to say to me, keep your eyes on your own paper. Yep. I think comparison is the, the thief of all joy when we compare. I love that. You know, compare. I love that. Just com the, the best thing is to compete with yourself. See where you're at and well, try to improve it. I, I, absolutely. It's all, it's, these two things are not so easy to do. It's not like it's going to happen overnight. It'll happen. Trust me, all of a sudden you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. You're going to awesome. get it or you'll get it more. It's not, well, you read a book and you get it. Read it 50 times. Keep learning. Like I said, you can learn. I used to have, I used to have a, one of my mentors say, uh, I used to say one important thing to me, uh, I always remember where it's important that he'd say to me, um, it's better to do the wrong thing than nothing at all. So take action. The game. Play, take action. It always comes up every time I'm talking to all the, 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 the leaders out there in practice management. The bottom line is now. Take mm -hmm. action now. Yeah. It seems to be a, and I agree with it. Cool. Let's, let's talk about your, the laser that you've developed. You showed me it before. It, it seems super small. So tell me, tell me about that. A lot of us don't know about that Remy laser. Well, the Remy laser is named after my Yorkshire Terrier, um, who's four pounds. And uh, the Remy's four, he's actually, the Remy's around four pounds. I wanted, to, I've always, I helped develop lasers that were portable mobile. And um, the Remy, it's a 30, I don't know how much you know about lasers, but it's a 30 watt laser. And it's multi, it's two dual wave. I can make any wavelength you want in it, but the dual wave is 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 the best one. And there's a lot of reasons why that. But it, it it's multifunction. And what's important? Most of the lasers today are one thing. If I was selling just a fungus toenail laser, I don't know if I would do it because it's only one thing. I and I learned that in 1984 when I had a CO2 laser, it cost me thirty six thousand dollars, and it only did one thing: warts. I'm not saying it wasn't bad, but I learned. That's only one stream of revenue. That's a lot of money for to kill a war, too. Yeah, I know. But I also learned, uh, that, you know, it's as Oscar Schindler would say, it's all in the presentation. I've talked to doctors that have, I'm not a gadget. Maybe I was a gadget person at one time. I mean, I had a fluoroscope in the early 80s in my office. But, but that being said is that, you know, laser is a, is a very special word. And you got to be careful with it. You don't want to use it negatively you shouldn't say that a laser corrects as a bunion or it does this you gotta be truthful mm -hmm. patients aren't stupid and um you know uh so that's the remedy and i gotta tell you one thing that's really i mean i never loved fungus toenails with lasers it's a complete program and i just think it's a very difficult program but i'm getting more feedback i always ask a doctor when he has a laser that's great this laser is great for fungus and i say to them one thing so how many referrals you're getting because of the uh, fungus treatment. I don't know. This is fun. I don't know. I said, well, that's how you know if you're on the right track is patients are talking to other patients that are coming in. And the, Re the Remy, more doctors are asking me for fungus. Pain is, I love pain. Pain, inflammation, because you can, I've learned a protocol uh, where um, it's, it's pretty simple, where uh, you can get rid of the pain immediately. They walk in and walk out pain-free. You need more treatments but they're, they're getting the effect of it immediately. With fungus, it takes months before you see the results. But with the Remy and the Microbur, um, 
my my feeling is is getting uh, is getting a little bit better. I have at least a dozen doctors out there that are saying to me they love it. And that's all they use it for. But I always ask them, are you getting referrals? Because mm-hmm. anybody can spend you know a lot of money and bring in patients and you never see them again. But you know you don't want to do that. You know it, you got to look yourself in the face. Is this a procedure that's helping my patients? Yeah. And that's the, I mean, with the Remy, just in the last, and I know the Remy is a great laser. I can tell you why. I just sold my fourth laser to a practice. I sold a third one to another practice in two last week. This is all within the last eight weeks. But I, I you know, and I've, I've read, I, I've, I've looked at practice management people and they'll say, um, what, what, on Shark Tank, I can't remember, I, in case I'll turn on Shark Tank. And he said something um, interesting. I forget which one it was. You got to work seven days a week. And you got to work hard. You know, everybody says work smart. It's also hard. You got to be, you got to be committed to that goal. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, it's not going to come to you. You got to go out there and make your mark out there, but it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Wow. I know uh, a, a lot of us uh, use lasers and we've been how do you say it? Uh, not really impressed with the laser. They work with some toenails, not others, and and things like that. And so having something that does everything. If people want to learn about Remy, do they just go to your website, or where do they learn about the Remy laser? Well, they can go. It's actually it's remylaser.com. Okay. Uh, they can they can always text me on my cell phone eight five six two two nine two nine three nine. But it's right. All, I mean, I have a website, and and I got to tell you one thing. It's important about it's not just the Remy. Because I, I, I have a philosophy, it's got to be effective with all the products, Onofix, all of them. It's got to be effective, affordable to the patient, a quick return on investment. And I've added, each time I keep adding things, one is you have to have great marketing. I work with Sarah Brinmeyer, who's somebody, you should, she's an amazing woman, strictly podiatry. And you have to have some practice management. It has to be everything with it. You have to be able to help the person. Uh, you know, some people can't quote sell. To me, selling is not the right word. To me, it's teaching. Doctors, mm-hmm. are, if you look up the word doctor, it, you're, it means you're a teacher. So you got to take the time and the effort and learn how to teach, which isn't so easy. Yeah. I think we're always so rushed sometimes, right? That, that, that's true. That, that's really, really true. Um, I love the way they're talking about today. Uh, get out of insurance. Get out. I want a cash practice. It's not so easy to do that. But if I had any advice to somebody, I would make that decision and don't look back. Don't go back. Either go, uh, do it. Just do it and see what happens. Uh, because if you're not committed to yourself, you'll sabotage yourself. Great. Great words. And let's, as we're finishing up here, let's talk about this new technology, this Onifix. Onifix um, meets my criteria in that, you know, it goes back to this. Podiatry only treats about 62% of all nail pathology, 62%. If you could get it to 65, 66%, look what that would do for our profession. And I always say that, and and I've said this with ESWT, I say this with Onofix. Did it ever occur to you that maybe we, why we only have 62%? And that's the closest procedure that we dominate. We don't dominate plantar fasciitis. I mean, we only see about 9% with plantar fasciitis, according to Barry Block. My point is maybe they don't like our treatments. Maybe somebody doesn't want to get a needle. Somebody doesn't want the podiatrist digging it out. They don't want surgery. So it gives you another option. I've always said that the, maybe, why doesn't the bathroom, the person that does bathroom toe surgery not come to you? Maybe they don't want to get a needle. Maybe, mm-hmm. we don't know, but it, you know, it's, we need to give them options. And I truly believe when I see yeah, 62% isn't bad, but what is a tooth getting filled? No, it's 100% by a dentist. Podiatry, we, we share, we need to get procedures that differentiate us that are effective. And we, the first thing we want to look at is the, the patient. What does that patient want? You know, I'm not saying just give in to them, or right? you got to use sound medical judgment, but the autofix clicked in my brain. It's no needles, no pain, it is evidence based. And it's, it's time tested. Not only do they have evidence, but it's been out there for years. I mean, when I was in ESWT, I didn't invent it. They were doing it in Europe for, you know, I, it's like Thomas Edison did not invite the light bulb. He perfected it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And all these procedures have been done around the world. You know, 
again, my goal is right now it's to give podiatry things and that they can take a look at it and make the judgment for themselves. I think AutoFix is going to be a great product. I've already invested a lot of money into it. I mean, most people would never would quit. It's being very slow. I, I give out the product a lot to, to people just to let them try it. I want them to try it. In fact, every Remy laser I sell, I give the product out to the doctor. And But you have to have good support. Bree Wright is an amazing teacher. She'll, you can text her and she'll get back to you right away. Yeah, yeah, she's the one that trained me. You need that. You need that. That's what I'll do. I've had three questions this morning where I answered the, the podiatrist on, a, you know, uh, on questions about the Remy, the Anufix, the Microbur. I just hope I don't get overwhelmed with it. But if I do, I'll figure something out, else out. You know, that's where you maybe have a mastermind program. Yeah. There you go. You're yeah. talking something. Yeah. Well, great, David. I think we, we covered a lot of stuff. On the bottom of this video, I'm going to put links to the, the Shockwave, the, the Micro Drill, the Remy Laser, and the Onifix. And really, I think what you said that was most effective is for us that are doctors, I think we, we a lot of times we want everything to be we're totally comfortable. The way we got totally comfortable with surgery was, was doing it, practicing it under someone else. And these new technologies, you can't get comfortable. You have to try it. Yep. And as long as it's not going to harm the patient, I think it's something that you could try and see how it goes and, and develop your own protocol. And, and I agree with you. But the last thing is you, you got to practice. I mean, I learned minimal incision surgery. Um, I was in my basement with bones and a vice. I went down in my basement. You got to, you, you don't, you don't, uh, in life, you, 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 you attack it. You know, you just don't, you attack it. I'm not saying go start on a patient. I, I, I actually teach minimal incision surgery or I teach doctors. How do you, every mycotic toenail you have that you burr down, you pretend you're, you're rubbing bone down. You have, and you, you, you gotta, you gotta, you know, go to people that have experience, but you don't jump right into a patient. Yeah. You can do little things. I can, t I've taught little things. Pretend you're operating on a, a, a piece of bone by with a burr by smoothing down a mycotic nail. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Cool. Well, thanks, David. And uh, what, what's uh, you, so you said your phone number before? Is there a website where they can get more information about, about you, about what you do? Actually, yeah. In my website, my main website is uh, uh, ZuckermanFT.com. Zuckerman Future Technologies. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> what else you want to say? I don't want to say off, off, off camera. I want to tell you something where I came up with the name. Okay. We're going to end this now and uh, information will be at the bottom of the video. Thank you guys. Hey guys, thank you for watching healthy living. You're going to find a few links here. I'd like to click one is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.